Hey, good evening. So, for all those of you watching on YouTube at the minute, this is a um, this is a live stream um, that was streamed over on my Twitch channel, and that's twitch.tv forward slash Gundam UK. Do check it out. I apologise for the background noise. It's a busy Friday night here in the Gundam UK household, <laughs> and uh, basically, what I'm doing at the moment is preparing. Um, the cross gun which is going to be the biggest weapon which is going to go with the Kotobukiya White Tiger um, just to update you on what I'm doing I am building this which is the Freem Arms um, White Tiger kit I have finished snapping it Here's how it's looking. I've got a few plans for it, uh, which I will go over in detail in a little while. But what I want to do first is just prep some uh, sandpaper, <laughs> which is always the most fascinating part of my videos, is prepping sandpaper. It seems to happen quite often. What I have here is get a little piece here and I'll explain to you what I'm doing so I have one of the pieces of the cross gun which is the which is going to be the white tiger's main weapon um, I'll show you how the cross gun looks I'll put it together I'll put it together just so you can see how it looks um, what I've done is, everything's been primed, I've already done uh, some seam line removal on the tops here and on the corners and I've given it its uh, first coat of primer just to uh, fill in any tiny scratches or any gaps that's in the, uh, that's in the plastic. There's more, more parts than what I thought there were. Let's get it all out. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, man, oh, it's quite a big thing, as you will see. Okay. The idea behind I'll give you sort of a brief overview while I'm doing this as to how what kind of look I am trying to achieve with this model. The idea is uh, it's going to have a kind of uh, oh this is going to be dodgy <laughs> maybe I shouldn't put that on Maybe I shouldn't assemble it. What I'll do is I'll kind of put it in a loose way so you can see its shape. It kind of looks... like this. Okay? If you can imagine that kind of length. I'm not going to assemble it because I want to do some sanding on this primer first. But this is basically the size of the cross gun. And that in comparison to the model itself, you can see it's quite a huge weapon. And uh, it's so big in fact that the, the model has a trouble holding it. So I spent some time earlier kind of fiddling with it and moving it around just to see if I could get it in a nice enough pose for it to stand with the cross gun. Uh, and it does weigh quite a bit for a lump of plastic. So. Anyway, I'm going to get on and paint this, but first uh, I need to prep it. So for those of you not, uh, not overly familiar with the whole process of painting these kits, everything should be primed um, before you paint it, obviously. Uh, the reason being, it helps the paint that you're going to apply to it adhere. 
it also fills in any tiny scratches or any uh, kind of imperfections on the plastic uh, it reveals to you any uh, hidden cracks or any seams that you've missed and um, the, the way I'm going to do this lot is slightly different to how I would normally do it and that is I've primed it using um, some Alclad I've primed it using this Alclad 2 grey primer grey primer and microfiller because I'm going to coat it again after this with another layer of primer uh, and some enamel just to give it a really nice shiny finish because uh, everything here is going to be done in metallics and it's also going to be an incredibly gaudy gold <laughs> and that fits rather well with uh, what my plan is for this model kit so I'm just putting my skewers away so what I've done is uh, I've, I've gone over everything in a fairly light coat well I'd say scrub that I've gone over it in a, in a kind of a medium coat of um, Alclad just to make sure it's filled in any scratches and that kind of thing and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wet sand all of these parts until I have a very nice uh, very nice and smooth finish so I want to make sure that it's as smooth as possible and that is why I've chopped up this piece of sandpaper which is 1200 grit it's pretty high and also I have this 3000 grit sanding sponge which I'm going to use for getting into some uh, more tighter areas now these sanding sponges I've found are not exactly 3000 grit well not exactly the grit that it says it is um, it certainly doesn't really correlate to how sandpaper is so I guess it's kind of like a, its own arbitrary uh, measurement of um, grit so I'm just going to have a bit of a feel mm, yeah it's quite nice it's pretty smooth actually and I'm going to cut off a little bit from here I need a small amount. I normally do things in like these strips. Doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. I'll do. Do, 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 do. There we go. That's the way. Now then, let's start. Get me a bowl of water because we are wet sanding. The advantage to wet sanding is, of course, that everything uh, everything that you take off um, gets kind of washed away into the water, and it kind of just adds um, it reduces the friction uh, between the plastic and the sanding paper. So it, it just results in a nice smoother finish, um, I found. So let's get this nice and wet. This is waterproof sandpaper. Um, you can get this stuff off Amazon, it's dead cheap. You can buy in sort of sheets. Um, about 10 sheets at a time. I'm just going to very carefully go over this. Until it's nice and smooth. Yeah, it's coming along nicely. It doesn't really matter too much if it, if you see some of the primer coming off, especially on the edges. That's not too much of a bother because it's going to be coated again, and this priming layer should be enough to uh, provide a good enough grip for the enamel to go on top. That's lovely and smooth. That's very good. Let's make sure I get right into the edges. Okay. Can use these parts here. 
while I'm at it. Let's just try out the uh, sanding sponge as well, see how this performs. It's the first time I've used this actually. This might actually be better. Mm, yeah, that's quite, that's probably quite nice actually. Okay. Um, I guess I should just use this for nooks and crannies and for bits that are harder to reach than the, uh, than the paper. Do, do, do. There we go. So while I do this, uh, I'll just talk about what the model is going to be about and it's going to sound pretty obvious <laughs> uh, by the fact that his weapon is a giant cross uh, it's going to be like how can I how can I describe it it's going to be like some kind of warrior monk style mech But it's going to be very, very over the top. <laughs> kind of think uh, like 16th century Christianity. It's going to be very, very ornate, very over the top in terms of its um, paint scheme. Uh, it's. I'm kind of uh, unsure as to what colours I'm going to use, so I'm going to. Do a plastic spoon test. Um, at the moment I have an idea to either go with a kind of royal purple and do a gold line pattern. So I'm going to do an undercoat of metallic gold then mask it off with some uh, kind of random stripes And then I'm going to paint over the top in maybe purple, but something that's matte. So uh, the under, the, whatever's underneath that's been masked uh, is going to be metallic and very glossy. So it'll be quite an interesting effect. Uh, I think somebody on my previous, or one of my previous streams gave me this idea. And uh, I really appreciate the idea because I think that's a fantastic idea. I think he said that he did it on... Um, it on a model car or does it on his model cars so it'd be nice to try out uh, something new a nice new technique don't think I've done anything like that before so it'll be new territory for me um, weathering wise not unsure it depends on whether I want to make it Continue to look super posh or not. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's not too noisy for you because it's quite noisy outside. My two boys are still up. <laughs> it is Friday night I guess so bid time is quite late on Friday. So it's either going to be that kind of royal purple mixed with metallic gold or it might just be black and gold or midnight blue and gold just something with a nice high contrast but something that also has a look of religious prestige I also have some uh, sort of additional uh, MSG parts that I could use for this as well that are being considered. Excuse me, I've got to be really careful here because I've got to try not to make the, uh, the primer inconsistent. 
we've also got to make sure that it's nice and smooth so just concentrating there when I do these tiny little nooks and crannies to make sure then it's uh, not taking it off too unevenly we're nearly there sometimes I'll do this twice so I'll do quite a medium to heavy prime layer identify any issues I have where these seams are showing through sand the whole thing down and then prime it all again <laughs> and that might be the case on some other parts of this kit but not for the cross gun purely because it's going to be coated in enamel it's nice and smooth Hopefully the grit's around about the same as what the 3000 grit is. So I'll make sure, I don't want to go into it too inconsistent. Maybe I should go over it with the sanding sponge first. And then go over with the paper maybe. That might be a better idea. So... Oh yeah, I did want to mention that there is a new contest starting, a new uh, modelling contest uh, with the Gunpla Builders Association. Um, I've been kind of offline for a couple of days, so I've only just found out about it. But it is, well the subject of the contest is uh, something that I greatly enjoy and that is grunt suits so we're talking GM's talking Zaku's anything that's basically on the front line anything that's cannon fodder and um, contest is I think it's uh, there's three categories you can enter any scale uh, any anything that's considered a grunt suit um, so you could like, I don't know, I guess you could do like a Graze or something from a different series, or Leo, maybe. Um, but yeah, there's three different categories, uh, like a Beginners, an Advanced, and a, sort of a Custom one. Um, pretty self-explanatory, I mean the Beginners one you don't have to, you don't have to do any painting, you just have to take a nice picture, um, maybe do some a little bit of detailing the advanced category is uh, a full on paint, maybe a tiny bit of modification and the uh, the customised category is of course for the full on customizations. Now for more details on this you need to head to the Gumplet Builders Association Discord and what I'll do is when I upload this video I will add in a link to this video description so you can go and check it out yourself. I uh, highly recommend you go and check it out. I, I'm going to enter it myself. Um, I have <laughs> uh, a Zaku 2 Master Grade version 1.0 <laughs> proper old school kit. But I thought as I've never built, well I've never done a Master Grade Zaku, this is a, kind of an ideal opportunity to see how well I can do one. I'd like to do one just um, very very standard but you know, not too standard so that it's boring but standard enough to make it look as though it really is just a front line bit of cannon fodder like the first Zaku's to uh, to meet up in battle on the front lines So we're talking a bit of um, maybe a bit of battle damage, a bit of light weathering, a bit of space weathering, that kind of thing. We shall see how that goes. I mean, the deadline for me is a little bit tight. 
Um, I think it goes from entry started from the 1st of January and it goes on till March, end of March maybe. You will have to check out the uh, Gunpla Builders Association Discord for all the proper details on that. But um, yes, yeah, well worth a go if you fancy challenging yourself. So the prizes are, are particularly awesome as well. So give it a go. I'm considering as well doing my own contest, but that takes some organisation, takes some thought, and um, I've organised quite a few contests before, <laughs> so it's nothing new to me. But, um, you know, I'd like to uh, do something this year for with Gundam UK. Maybe that's enough. Let's have to give it a good old feel. Um, I'll need to dry it off as well. I need to dry it off. I have a flannel. I have a flannel here. Let's see if we can use this to dry it off. I don't have a cloth here somewhere. There we go. Microfiber cloths are really good. Really good uh, to get hold of, really handy. I'm just going to dry this off and make sure it's smooth enough for it to take an enamel layer. The great thing about enamel is, although it's slow drying, it's um, brilliant at, at leveling. Hopefully, this um, priming layer has um, taken off any uh, imperfections. And uh, will hopefully leave me with a a, uh, a nice surface to work with. It's going to be multiple shades of gold as well. It's going to be incredibly gaudy. <laughs> as a, a lot of um, kind of old Christian style stuff was. Mm, yeah, I think I'm okay with that. I think we're good. There's a bit of a seam line showing through, which I'm a bit concerned about. I might have to address that. For now, let's continue on, make sure all the surfaces are nice, exactly as I want it. I'll leave that for a day or so, just to make sure it's completely dry. And I really need to blow my nose. Excuse me. Yeah, right, let's continue. Yeah, let's get this sucker nice and wet. There we go. There we go, that's lovely. So nice. Well, I might have to get in there with a bit of paper. Yeah, then you kind of draw back to uh, doing this kind of wet sanding is that you end up with prune fingers but I mean uh, you could always wear gloves I guess but the problem with that is that I find that I can't handle the piece as well wearing gloves I think it's because um, maybe the gloves that I have are too big <laughs> but, uh, I've got dainty little girly fingers, so <clears throat> it's often hard to judge what size gloves I need. So there we go. Let's get right in these little bits here. I can foresee there being a lot of masking on this one. Because uh it's not a particularly complex piece this so a lot of it is just like just singular blocks 
so I'm definitely going to have to do a lot of masking. But thankfully, it's not it's not like a like a one one forty fourth scale. Masking in this scale is a lot easier than one one forty fourth. Um, as I recently <laughs> discovered uh, when I was working on the HG Atlas. I really love the design of the Atlas. I know it's a bit of a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I know it creates a little bit of a... Controversy. Is that even the right word? Words. Words are failing me today. Um, some people either love it or you hate it, basically. But I love it. And I really hope that they make a master grade version of the Atlas. That will be superb. I'm also very much looking forward to the Deep Striker and the um, F91. So glad they make it to 2.0. It is one of the most beautiful lead gun down suits, I think. Again, it doesn't really matter if I take off loads of primer. It's it's not going to be a problem as long as there is enough to uh, sort of form a nice a nice layer for the paint to grab onto. We're all good. Okay, a bit more inside there. Sweet. Also, I haven't really thought of a name for what this is going to be. So I was kind of like, I've got to be, I've been looking around Wikipedia, trying to find a uh, an interesting historical reference that I could attribute this to. Because obviously, it's not in any, it's not in any kind of um, canon universe, as it were. So I kind of just had to make up a backstory for it. I quite enjoy doing that. It's quite an interesting way of helping you to focus on uh, how the model should look. And because this one has a kind of uh, a, a Christian connotation, it's um, probably going to have uh, a, a name along those lines. Probably open it out. This uh, it has all kinds of little tiny mechanisms inside, inside the cross gun that I know to move it, move it around into uh, different configurations. Um, when it's finally done, though, um, it's not really. It's just going to be like the standard big cross. Um, I don't intend to really do a lot of dynamic posing of this kit because it has a few issues. <laughs> um, the problem with, I think uh, this is probably why they've released it again. Um, and they're probably, hopefully they've improved it. But in this particular version of the White Tiger, uh, the shoulder connections are not very strong. Um, they're quite weak, which concerns me a little bit because it's gonna struggle to hold the cross gun. Um, I think I've figured out a way for it to do it without the uh, shoulders uh, deciding to uh, divorce the main body of the kit. Do, 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 do. The rest of the kit is pretty much alright. I mean, the only, the only thing that I don't like about it is that it doesn't seem to have any sort of uh, vertical movement 
in the shoulders that's it. He can't move his mom, move his arms outwards, um, which is a bit of a shame. Um, it has very limited movement here, like a chicken, um, which uh, ordinarily wouldn't be a problem. But as he's going to be holding this huge cross gun, I would prefer it so that he could just lift his shoulder up um, a little bit. So the cross gun could rest on his back shoulders so you can see the whole cross gun from a three quarters angle and it, it would look pretty cool like uh, pretty much like tri gun style um, if you've not seen tri gun then you, you this is exactly where the whole concept of a cross gun has come from <laughs> so um, yeah check out tri gun anime um, So we're going to have to settle with him holding or, or for the cross gun to rest on his back. Basically on the backpack, more or less. Um, and it looks okay. Um, I can always pose it kind of like with it resting on the ground. Um, somebody suggested on my Facebook page, and I thought this was a really good idea, um, to construct some clear plastic um braces to support the gun in a position that i'd like it to be in but um i don't know if i could do that i could have a go at it um that's kind of out of my comfort zone um, but it's certainly worth a look at i've got i've got quite a few sort of clear plastic bits uh, I remember I did order some decals a while ago for my Iron Bloody Orphans model kits uh, from China. And uh, for some bizarre reason, <laughs> um, whichever shop I bought it from were doing some kind of promotion uh, where if you bought these Iron Blooded Orphans decals, you also get uh, like a, a clear display base but it's like a blatant copy of one of the Kotobukiya ones for figurines so it has this kind of weird u-shaped connection on it um, but because because I've got five sets of IBO decals um, that I was getting for a mecha lounge contest I ended up getting five of these stands as well so uh, they're just kind of hanging around not doing much and I don't really collect figures, so it doesn't really uh, have any much use for me. So I guess maybe I'll look at those, see if they'll work. You never know. And my fingers are starting to get sore already. That's not a good sign. Wow, it's getting very wet around here. Right, let's give this a bit of a rinse. Yeah, there's quite a lot of primer coming off. Of course, that's not a bad thing. Let's draw this off. I've actually glued this section together as well. Because um, <coughs> in my last video, when I was assembling this cross gun, um, these two flaps were sticking out like a V shape. Um, that's probably due to the fact that it's not an original, not an original, uh, originally cast kit. It's uh, it's a knockoff. <clears throat> Give me flannel. Oh, so mm, still a bit scrap. I don't know how good that is. Uh, I might have to do a couple of layers of enamel. I'm thinking, or maybe another layer of primer. It's smooth enough, 
but it has to be smoother because I want that shiny shiny and you might be able to see still a bit of a seam line there but that's merely optical <laughs> it's not like a you can't physically feel it um, it's pretty level so once uh, once I get the enamel on this hopefully you won't even notice it was there Tricky. There's a bit of a bit of a grill here. Let's see if I can get the sponge right in there. And I'm being flicked with water and primer. It's gonna ruin my t-shirt. Thankfully I didn't go too in too heavy with the primer, so it's not, uh, not giving me a gritty finish. Okay. I just realised as well that um, this year, it's the first year that I haven't done like a year in a year in review video, um, <clears throat> and I guess the reason for that is I don't think I've done that much this year. Um, certainly not in terms of um, progressing. Um, I've really concentrated a lot on my painting skills. Um, and that's purely for selfish reasons. <laughs> um, I really, really love a well-painted kit. Um, I do like to modify things, but there's something about I don't know the original kit's design. Um, I think it's incredibly hard to improve upon something that's that's been designed specifically um, by somebody because obviously they, they see it exactly how they want to see it uh, I guess when you modify it you're kind of like I don't know how can I explain it I can't really explain it in a way that's not going to be offensive to some people it's like a, uh, taking a uh, like a painting by Da Vinci and then drawing over the top of it <laughs> that sounds that's probably quite hyperbolic because uh, some people make some absolutely amazing conversions to originally designed kits um, I mean that's beyond a doubt but then again some people make some absolute abominations when it comes to um, modifying and, uh, I guess it's all good if you're practicing I guess it's okay if you like if you want to add some weapons or make it specialized in some way or have some kind of special purpose or has like a backstory but I don't know sometimes you know you should just leave a design alone and just make a nice paint job and um, this is of course entirely my opinion this is not a, this is not this is not an objective thing I just think some designs should be left as is and you're probably uh, doing it more doing it a better service making it look nice with a nice paint job rather than uh, modifying the hell out of it and not even bothering painting it I find that kind of model quite bizarre
see a bit of a line poking through there in that case I think that might need might need some putting again or another round of priming I'll wait until that's dried out and I'll take another look Let's have a look at this next piece. Okay, nice and smooth. So thinking about the process of painting the, the main kit, um, I don't think it, I don't think there'll be different different coloured uh, different coloured panels on it. It's all going to be one uniform uh, purple and gold, but the uh, the pattern of the gold is going to be quite sporadic and. Uh, just going to be lots of lines. It's very really hard to explain how that's going to look. I, I, I can see how it's going to look in my mind, um, but it's hard to kind of uh, put into words. <coughs> There's going to be lots of uh, uh, sort of metallics for the internal parts uh, around sort of the inner waist area, just to give it a nice, um, <coughs> nice realistic dimension. The rest of it will be this kind of uniform purple, or blue, or black. Because uh, I'm thinking about going quite, uh, quite dark purple, a very sort of um, royal, royal religious colour. I don't really need to do the insides here, but I'm going to go over it anyway. So I got a new kit today. Oh no, what was it? It was yesterday. I got a new kit yesterday. And it's one of those frame arm girls gurais. Uh, when I first saw those, I thought they looked a bit ridiculous. Um, but I don't know why, they kind of grew on me. Purely because um, <coughs> they're quite different. In fact, they're very different to what I'm used to. And uh, the aim was, um, I kind of said to myself, that I'm going to do more Kotobukiya and more different mech kits this year. Um, obviously I will do some Gundam related things this year, because I can never not do that. I'm definitely a bit of a fanboy. But there will definitely be some more uh, Kotobukiya stuff. Because uh, I still have the uh, Frame Arms uh, Kagotsuchiku Otsu, which is the, the massively over armoured sniper model kit. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing looking. It looks like a walking tank. Um, uh, I built one before, quite, quite a few years ago. Uh, it was one of the first kits I did a nice masking job on. I managed to, um, I don't know how, I managed to. Successfully make uh, a rising sun pattern uh, with the uh, sort of um, beams coming out of it, like the old, uh, like the old um, imperial Japanese flag. 
<coughs> and it was uh, quite a nice, nicely contrasted model. And I put a kind of a orange hue in the middle of this shield. And um, I can't for the life of me figure out how I managed to create nice circular masking patterns on that, but I did it. Uh, the paint job itself is uh, not great. Um, I guess we all start somewhere. It was it's very uh, very gritty basically. Uh, before I kind of uh, looked into and experimented in uh, preparing surfaces. Because it's kind of odd, you kind of expect that when you put paint onto plastic, especially when you put it on top of a primer, you kind of expect that the, uh, that the paint will level out and uh, give you a nice finish, especially if it's like a gloss, a gloss paint, like a gloss Tamiya or a, like a lacquer paint from Mr. Colour. But it doesn't, it will just take on the characteristic of the surface below it. So you've always got to make sure that the surface below is nice and smooth. And I don't know why I just did not get that <clears throat> back when I first started out in the hobby. But it's strange how you kind of look back on um, look back on how you used to do things and and think to yourself, you know, what why on earth did I do it that way? But you live and learn, as they say. And I actually learned doing it this way from Matt Morozek. Um, and if you've not heard of Matt Morozek, he's a, a very, very talented um, um, modeler. He doesn't just do he doesn't just do Gundam stuff. He does he does quite large scale Gundam, quite a lot of resin, quite a lot of sci-fi modeling. And uh, he's just an incredible painter. Um, really, really nice colour choices. Really beautiful, sort of glossy, clean finishes. And his work is definitely worth checking out if you've not seen. Um, I think he, he's on YouTube. Um, he used to be on as Matt Morozek, but I think he's recently changed it to Matt's Models. So do do a little search for him if you get the chance. It's um, fascinating watching his process. Uh, yeah, I think I, I kind of learned this twice priming method from him, um, and ever since I followed it, I've, I've managed to maintain uh, some really nice surfaces to paint on. They're saying that I kind of cheated, um, kind of. Well, I discovered a a different primer um, a few months ago uh, called Ultimate Primer, and uh, this is a, a polyurethane-based primer. So it's not it's not exactly the same as like a like a lacquer-based primer like Alclad is. This is um. <coughs> plastic based acrylic and uh, it's incredibly strong and incredibly smooth it actually really surprised me um, so I started using that and ever since I started using that um, I haven't had to do this sanding um, well you shouldn't have to do this sanding anyway but sometimes um, the old Alclad um, is not as controllable in the airbrush well for me anyway probably because I'm using the wrong sized nozzle in the airbrush but um, ever since I discovered this product uh, I've been using that instead and I've got, got it in multiple colours, got it in white, the black and the grey it's always worth getting primer of different colours uh, especially uh, if you're going to paint if you're going to paint in bright colours it's always worth priming in white and if you're going to do metallics you should prime it in black um, even though I've primed this in grey <laughs> but uh, that's beside the point this is going to be coated in enamel anyway so I'll have a nice uh, 
nice shiny base to it. But yeah, especially for, like, for internal frame parts, I will use black primer. I think we're nearly done with this one. Hopefully you can't hear that really annoying dog outside. Since the dog is locked outside, he must bark repeatedly. I don't know why people do that. I find it very bizarre. If you're going to have a dog, why the hell have you locked it outside? Don't bother having a dog in that case. <laughs> That's my old man grump coming out. <laughs> oh, I do have a bit of an, a bit. I don't have a dog myself, but I do have a little bit of an affinity with dogs because of the company I work for. Oh, hopefully that's enough. There's kind of a small um, lens slash gem thing underneath here. And I've got to be very careful to make sure that that stays as smooth as possible. Because that is going to be um, like a translucent red. Okay. There we go. Pretty good. And she knows. So. So aside from doing this recently, I've been um, ferociously addicted to my PlayStation. <laughs> um, I play a lot of Minecraft, but the only reason why I play that is because my son plays it too. So we've been uh, slowly building up our own little world. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a good father-son activity, <laughs> staring at a computer screen, not talking for three hours. <sighs> I've also recently got. Um, I think I'm late to the uh, late to the to the hype on this one. Um, I've got Persona Five, <laughs> which is an incredibly different uh, kind of turn-based RPG and was certainly different to the one that I've ever played and uh, it's just so addictive and I haven't really got that far yet but um, when I first got it I found myself playing it for a few hours and then um, when I went to bed I couldn't stop thinking about it and that is the worst especially when you're trying to sleep and you end up thinking, oh, maybe I should go do this dungeon, or maybe I should go do some studying, or maybe I should just go eat a burger. Mm, there's some kind of tricky, tricky mechanics in here. I want to make sure I catch that. Then we'll get in there with a the sponge. Again, I'm not being I'm not being overly careful and that's it's fine. It's fine at this stage. I'm just pushing quite hard just to make sure I get right into the gaps. I 
and again you won't really see this piece <laughs> but you should never uh, never really um, never try to cut corners because <laughs> then uh, you end up getting sloppy and that's my philosophy anyway well everything's getting very wet um, uh, oh god I'm getting that blurry eye thing you know when you stare at something too close for too long uh, okay all right so I'm nearly done mm -hmm. I think we are approaching the end of this stream now I wanted to just stream for about an hour just so I could kind of go over my idea um, if anybody does have one of these Kotobukiya white tigers um, you know, we if you have any ideas of how I could <laughs> mount this cross gun um, I'd really appreciate it I mean there's lots of hard points on the model itself so you know I could I could mount it somehow to the model but then the issue becomes the weight of the cross gun again it's quite quite a heavy thing let's just get in between these grills Hopefully tomorrow I'm going to start applying the uh, the enamel coat on this. Unfortunately, that means that I've got to I've got to coat everything in enamel tomorrow and then wait a good. I like to leave it a good few days. I know that sounds a bit ludicrous, but it's uh, always I don't know. It just seems to work better if you give it a few days to cure. It's normally sort of touch dry within three to four hours. Actually, humbral enamel, but in order for it to be, you know, a good strength, uh, to make it nice and durable, I'll leave it for uh, a good couple of days. It's called paranoia painting. Let's see what's done there. Um, before I go, I just want to show you the. Uh, I'll show you the points that I mean. Here are all of the uh, sort of strong points strong points? I don't know what you call them. Um, hard points I think they're called. They're just tiny holes all over the kit that allow you to mount different parts to it. Um, as, as is the nature of frame arms kits, they have all of these hard points to allow you to customise the kit how, you, how you'd like it. Um, I mean there's a few of these hard points here, I mean they're, they're all sort of generally a compatible size. So you can see there, it just fits straight into the side of the thigh there. Um. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. I guess that's one way to mount it. Mm. But yeah, I mean, if you if you have any ideas or suggestions, I really appreciate it. Um, you can message me on my Facebook page, or you can just comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. That part's already done. I'm going back on myself and redoing bits. Oh, so, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I think I'm gonna wrap up this live stream for now. So, um, thank you for watching. Um, and, uh, I'll see you again soon. I'll probably do a bit more streaming here on uh, on Twitch. Um, just um, basically when I am at the workbench, I'll probably just start streaming. We'll see how that goes. Um, so thank you for watching, um, and um, I'll see you again soon. Bye.